<laughs> Let's go. Honestly, if your dog decides Let's to go. make it to this conversation, that's totally fine. Hey, he will. <laughs> well, Odyssey, welcome to the show. I've obviously been dying to have you on for a little while, but you know, this is the best time to have you on because you're about to start playing this summer. Actually, the Women's College World Series is about to start. Like, let's talk yeah. softball. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm so ready. Um, so let's just give everybody what they want. So they got to see us in the same same lineup for this ULM celebrity game. Um, was it what you thought it was gonna be? Cause it like was way cooler than what I like. I was I didn't know what to expect going to this game. And we just got treated Honestly, like queens. We did. I didn't know what to expect either. That was like one of my first, like I feel like I've been around like celebrity games and just seeing how they've been like ran and stuff like that. But that was really cool because one, we're all softball alum. And, you know, just to see one, how the girls were like, they were excited. The college girls, they were super excited. And just to see the smiles on their face, like that's something that just brings me joy and I'm all for. So, you know, anything to, you know, continue to let the game grow. I'm I'm in. I'm in. So it was was a lot of fun. And especially like with the program, like this year, Molly has already taken the program to have the winningest season and they're still playing games. Um, right. but it felt like you said, it felt kind of cool to just be around their athletes and like, yeah. they could ask us questions. I really love the panel that we did where yes. they just like asked us anything. And so of course, like the main question that you got asked was like, okay, tell us about the play. Can we start talking about <laughs> the play, the dive at home? I was planning on talking about it later, but, um, <laughs> everybody asked you this question and I just kind of wanted to kick it off because, I want to know what your perspective was, you know, the diving play against OSU, you didn't have time to throw it to your catcher. You're diving home and smashed her in the gut and got her out. Like, (laughs) tell me about the adrenaline that was probably going through your body during that moment. I mean, it was a lot. I feel like going on in that moment, like one, like you're on the, one of the biggest stages, like you'll ever be on, um, as a softball player. And it's always a goal for any softball player to get to that point in their softball career and just to be there like it's like at the moment I had no feels I'm like what is going on like are we truly at the world series and to just have that play I feel like personally like that's something I feel like I would do in a rec ball game like that's just always been who I was and like just a very competitive and like no you're not going to score type of deal but like I feel like just being on that stage and being in front of all those people like they actually got to see like the true me you know what Mm. I'm saying so just very grateful for the world series I'm grateful for you know that platform that they give these young athletes and stuff like that to just one honestly it's made me who I am today like that one little play like changed my life for a very long time and it's just like dang like that that can happen Mm -hmm. when you really think about it like that can happen like I'm just grateful for being at the World Series. Like, we didn't even have to play a game yet. We could have lost every game. And I'm like, (laughs) I'm cool. Like, we made it, whatever. (laughs) But, like, just to be in that moment and make that, you know, really cool play, I guess you guys can say, like, it it really did make me who I am today. But that's the play that, you know, in the CAA I would have done. Like, if I had the opportunity to make that play, I would have done it. So just the platform made it even cooler, I guess Mm. (laughs) you could say. Yeah. Yeah. Probably probably like an out of body experience almost. Yeah. So (laughs) you mentioned that it was like playing rec ball. Like it's just how you play the game. Like I was literally just watching a video of this son and and his dad, like hitting a ball in their living room and he like smoked it and started running around these cute little bases and he like dove home, dodged the tag. And I'm like, (laughs) dude, this kid became an athlete from his house, you know, (laughs) like he wasn't born like doing this but he was raised like competing and playing and just like going all out and that's just who he is and like the fact that you got to be who you are on that huge stage you probably can accredit it to a lot of your upbringing and Mm -hmm. you know can you take us back to younger odyssey and like what brought you into the game what kept you in the game and loving it um honestly just my grandparents my grandpa definitely put me into sports and you know I'll just be forever grateful for them in general like grandma was never she didn't really know a lot about sports, but like grandma for sure made sure like I was okay. Like I had Gatorade, snacks, whatever I needed to, you know, take on the day at practice or take on the day at a game. Like she made sure I was okay. And then grandpa was just 
there. And one thing about him, I will say is like, no matter after a loss or a bad game or anything like that, like he was always the same and he remained the same. And it was never a, you can do better. Like it was none of that. Like it was all positivity and like, cause he just knew like what type of athlete I was and how much love I had for the game and how much passion I have for the game that it kind of made the sport a little bit easier, you know, cause you'll get kids who, you know, struggle because you know their parents are hard on them and I'm not saying my parents weren't hard on me my grandparents were they were strict they were very very strict obviously and I see now like they just wanted what was best for me and that's why I say it's so cool to grow up you know and see how much you have grown as a person how much you know the experiences you did go through like how much it made you you um but they got me into softball continued to play softball never thought I was going to college that was surprising honestly <laughs> I'm like you want me to go to like a d1 college like even though we we're mid-major but I'm like what free for free like mm. I'm I'm going and you know that was kind of just a step in the right direction and one thing I never wanted to do was disappoint my grandparents so whatever that was was getting the books you know making sure I have my grades and just making sure I you know, do what I have to do to, you know, get out and make it out. And that's who raised me. If you didn't know my grandparents, they adopted me. So they did raise me. Um, so I'm just forever grateful for them and anything they need from me now. I blessed to say and just have the opportunity to, you know, give back to them, like whatever they need. That's so cool. And obviously you shared that within like a minute or two, but like from a recruiting standpoint, you know, probably not having a clue what recruiting was, which is me as well as like, what is this world? What is college? How the heck do I get there? Was it like a happenstance and JMU was like at a game like randomly or, you know, how did that come to be? Yeah, it was randomly. I was actually at a high school state tournament and um, I feel like the coach came to watch the other girl on the other team that we were playing in the semifinals or something. I believe it was the semifinals. I don't even remember, but he was there to watch the other girl pitch and his I guess I caught his eye and he was like, no, I kind of want her. So that's where that all came about. I ended up going to a camp, one camp, literally one JMU camp, verbally committed after that. You know, now they can't really do that because, <laughs> so the recruiting process is totally different. Like, I feel like I get a lot of girls who ask me about like, you know, how was your recruiting process? Did you do this? Did you do that? I'm like, no, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> had no idea about any of that like never had to post on Twitter never had to send videos like I just everyone's journey is different and mine was just very different and it just happened almost like in a blink of an eye and that's why I tell a lot of girls like you never know who's watching like there's always somebody watching and I had no idea that coaches there didn't even go to the state finals thinking a college coach would be there I went to win and yeah. that's literally you know just always been me so grateful for that too you know dang it this is why I love this podcast because I didn't know that story but like how cool is it and how just it keeps people into perspective like no journey is cookie cutter no like none of them right like the fact that the coach was there to watch somebody else tells you that like if you just go play your game beat like work to beat the crap out of the opponent you're against like you right. never know who's you there don't. watching you and like the way you play the game and you play it with such presence and just cool, calm, collective odyssey. Like I've never seen someone so chill in like these pressure situations. And, you know, I'm, I guarantee you, you were that same chill. Just I've, I'm owning this moment in that high yeah. school game and boom, you're recruited. Yeah. Like I grew, I grew to that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's it took a lot. lot of these kids. Yeah. It took a lot. And it's just, I worked so hard to be, you know, great at what I do and then that's where the confidence comes from and mm -hmm. you're just like this is what I do bro like it's, <laughs> it's it's all right you know you win some you lose some it is what it is and I feel yeah. like once I hit that mindset of like you know you're great you know you're good at what you do like it doesn't define me who I am like you know off the field or anything like that like I'm I'm cool but I used to be like <gasps> Oh, I'm so <laughs> mad at myself like or just mad that we lost the game and stuff like that my grandpa's like it's okay like you're fine like let's go get McDonald's you're, you're good you're human <laughs> right <laughs> you make mistakes it's okay oh my gosh okay so tell me about the water well and you pitching into a brick wall like I think this is the part of Odyssey that I admire so much and you literally you learn how to pitch through YouTube videos right I did I'm in a Scarborough that's my girl <laughs> 
I'm going to text her after this and be like, hey, yes. at minute so-and-so of the podcast, you need to listen. She knows, though. I literally told her because she interviewed us before the World Series. Mm-hmm. And this is where I kind of, like, broke down what we can talk about all that later. But, like, I'm like, girl, you know, I used to, like, you're my idol, right? I used to watch you all the time. And, like, I was trying to keep cool, you know, because we had the World Series. I'm trying to be, like. And she like, had no idea. Never yeah. been there before. <laughs> like oh this is my idol and she's interviewing me right now I'm feel kind of cool you know and I was like girl you know I used to watch you like you taught me you taught me right she didn't know she had no idea no nope. but yeah the water well um well at first I started because my grandparents have a brick house right so my first my grandpa was like throw up in this house like it'll come back to you bounces off the brick comes back to me my grandma was like absolutely not you're not caving in the house like you're 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 crazy like you throw a little too hard so then my grandpa was like okay go to the water well cave that thing in with no problem and I did it every single day and it's like not because like I don't know because grandpa said to do it he never told me to do anything he would have to tell me come in the house from throwing the ball because I was just out there like I got to get this right <laughs> hmm, is this the right form you know <laughs> trying to figure myself out and build my craft like it was something I did every day because I enjoyed it and I loved it. And that's what I tell the kids now. I'm like, you're so hard on yourself, bro. But if you put in the work to just, you know, be you, trust me, all that confidence and all that stuff, that will come. Like, you're hard on yourself. And I'm just like, why? You're human. It's okay. I would throw the ball over the well. It would go in the road. And I would, I only had one ball. And I would have to go get it. <laughs> And there would be times where I left the ball and the glove outside on accident because I guess I was just so tired or I thought I was going back out. My grandparents were like, no, you're not going back outside. And the water would be like waterlogged. And I'm just like, oh. And my glove would be messed up. And I'm like, oh, this is the glove, only glove I have. I know, it's so sad. I know. But then once my grandpa figured out, like, okay, you're good at this sport. I'm going to buy you some expensive stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Started to get the nice stuff. Like, you like, proved it. Yeah, travel ball. Yeah. But, you, you know, proved kind of it. Made the best of what I had, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of times, you know, athletes right now they're going through this process of like, oh, I need this new hitting tool. I need to spend five hundred dollars on this thing that might work. And it's like, right. at the end of the day, like the person holding the ball, right? The person holding the glove, the person holding the bat, like that is the thing that needs to be, you know, worked on first. You know, before you right. get all this super fancy equipment, like let's just compete with a tennis ball in the backyard first, you know, like, 100%. you know, I have a one-year-old and we bought him his first tee and ball, like for, for his birthday. He hasn't opened it yet. Don't tell him. Um, okay. okay. <laughs> he can't even walk yet. Okay. So we got time, but you know, it's like, we spent what $12 on this. Like I'm yeah. not going to spend a ton of money on something until he's proven that like, this is his yeah, jam. This, this is, is what he wants, right. you know? And so I think there's just a lot to think about. It's like, I think that wall and that one ball is who made Odyssey, Odyssey, you know, (laughs) like it's not, yeah, it's, it built you and, and the support that you had from your grandparents too. Like, yes, they're, they're probably like this girl, (laughs) she she will not stop, you know, until she gets this. So when you were watching the YouTube videos, would you just go through like one drill of Amanda's and be like, okay. I'm going to go work on that and yep, I'm just going to get perfect practice. Yep. But it's like with my body, cause obviously, you know, pitchers, softball players, different biomechanics, like different things going on with the bodies. Like our bodies are different like stuff. Like, so just figuring out me and being creative with my body, you know, just trying different grips that she showed is my comfy with this. I would just do all types of stuff. It was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot. So trial and error. And then with hitting. Yeah. Trial and error. And then with hitting, I would just grab the stick you know, that my grandpa probably had laying around and I would throw up the gravel, hit it, like just having fun. <laughs> like that's, like that's what it's things. all about. It's about fun. Yeah. Like yeah. these little, my neighbors have three boys and they are whipping out like golf drivers, hitting golf balls like crazy. What? Not towards my house. Thank God. <laughs> but you- they're throwing up baseballs and hitting them. And I'm just like, this is how athletes are made. You know, yes. it's just go out and go play. And like, you literally yes. use a stick and gravel. Like, mm-hmm. do we, do we need anything else? No. No. Um, I do though. Mm-hmm. Ha- what were you going to say? No, nothing. Oh. I was like, you don't need anything. No, you don't. 
Um, so I'm kind of going a little bit outside of where I wanted to go, but you're sponsored by Mizuno right now. And mm-hmm. we were talking about like picking up a stick. Okay. Low key. I'm obsessed with their bats. Like I've swung one once. Which and one? Every- you the one piece or the two? It was the one piece, but I think personally with my swing, I think I would, I would do better with the two. It was just one that my athlete had, mm-hmm. but okay. So tell me about these bats. I've been obsessed with them for so long. I wish I could go back and like play and use them, but like, yeah. this is not sponsored by Mizuno or anything, but tell me about the carbon bat because youth ball doesn't have a lot of them, but college ball, mm-hmm. they're everywhere. So I think it's the smoothest bat I've ever swung, to be honest. I think it's pretty easy, too. I personally have this one that um, it's the white one. So it's not the new ones that they have out yet. But I've had this since I started the pros. um, And I try not to break it. This is my baby. Like, it comes (laughs) off the bat. Like, just I'm like, I cannot break this. This will only be used in games. This will only be used like I can't break this one and I've still had it but I'm in love and I feel like I've just always been in love one Jenny Finch was always a role model for me like just seeing her growing up I always want Jenny Finch glove grandpa I want a Mizuno glove I want Mizuno cleats I want Mizuno this Mizuno that Mizuno is just the brand right now okay and obviously Jenny Finch (laughs) so I'm all for it and I've been using it for so long so it's just you know the yeah. Eastern bats, okay, they're pretty hot. Not gonna lie, <laughs> they are. They are. Easterns are pretty hot. What else do pros use? Demarinis. What else we got? Marucci's coming out of nowhere, right now. Yeah, they're they're very popular in baseball, but now they're making their mark in softball. In college, still, I use Mizuno all five years too. So mm-hmm. the one piece is pretty hot. Yeah, and Rawlings. I one guess, piece is, is always big. hot. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I forgot yeah. about them. Yeah. <laughs> but what's so, so what I found interesting about this bat, because I hear bats all day, I'm a hitting coach, but like when you hit the Mizuno, it doesn't sound loud and like poppy. No. It's like, it's like a It'll smooth, just crisp, like, you know, and like, yes. I think from, there was some sort of study done on like, if it's not a super loud pop, youth athletes don't want to swing it because they want the super loud bat right? Like Easton, right. you can hit that ball anywhere on the bat and it sounds like you hit a home run, but like, yeah. it doesn't sound solid unless you actually hit the sweet spot right. of the Mizuno bat. Right. And there's something I love about that. Like it's, it's I not like, free fruit. It's more feel. I feel like it helps like the hitter though. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it, li- it literally does help the hitter. Like in college when we would hit in negative two degree weather and I love had that one piece and I'm like, I don't think I want to do this today. <laughs> like any bad is going to do that though. But I'm like, I don't think I want to do this today. <laughs> like, ball? Oh no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't it's feel my hands. outside coach. I just... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We get it playing. No, like, you like, better hit it on the sweet spot and you're good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's, it's true. Like if you hit the middle, yeah. like it's I've fine. I've always been a fan of, you know. Yeah. 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 Okay. I just wanted yes. to kind of. You talked about the Always stick and now we're one. talking about your current stick. So, um, <laughs> I love that. Uh, now yeah. I just want to buy one. Now I just want one for myself because I still, I literally have my rocket tech bat right next to me right now. I have some broken ones. Yeah. Yeah. I dented I give this the broken one. ones away. Like some yeah. people want them and I'm like, you have a rocket tech. Uh-huh. It's right here. Bro. Let me just whip it out. <laughs> it's like, it's the OG. I kid you not. That is the OG. <laughs> it is the OG. And I can't get rid of it. I wonder. It's probably worth like thousands like, now. Yeah, a hundred percent. Have you like swung that? Not recently. Like I haven't hit like a full ball like, with it. Like I hit wiffle balls down here, but yeah. There's how is there's it compared to like the bats now. What do you think? Well, <laughs> this is kind of like cheating. <laughs> You know, you barely touched it and it was in the outfield when I played and I needed that. I was a small scrawny kid that needed some sort of pop. So when I got this, this is like, again, cheating. I don't even think they're regulated this one anymore. Like it's like, I never bought one. Yeah. Well, this was like what the Easton of then, but yeah, but my teammates would use the one. They had the newer models, like Mm. the newer models. Mm -hmm. They were pretty hot. I'm like, yeah. 
I don't think I've used a newer model. No, that was that was my baby. And then I outgrew it. And then I think I went to like a halo yeah. bat or something. Oh, but okay. Then I swung worth, but yeah. So talk about yeah. this. Okay, so you're a dominant pitcher and a dominant hitter. Like you do both. This is why mm-hmm. you won AU. Like you gotta have this advantage when you can pitch and hit. So yes. is, was that like a goal of yours when you were younger? It's like, I wanna be so great at both things or did you love one more than the other? No, I did not love one more than the more than the other put me on the field somewhere <laughs> I don't care where you throw me preferably not shortstop or second base or center field <laughs> or my <field>. favorite position <laughs> no I mean, obviously I could do it like I'm just an athlete that I just feel like okay you figure it out where I'm fine but yeah the pro league I don't need to play shortstop why would I do that <laughs> no like, you got Hannah flipping you got you got yeah yeah sis babe, like, first base cool I, I I got that. I got that under control. But like I've just always been that player who wants to be on the field. And I was even in college where like they gave me the opportunity to pitch and hit. Like if I wasn't pitching, I was either DP or I was in right field or first base. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that was just like, okay, like I can do this. You know? Yeah. And even growing up, like, yeah, I played shortstop, everyone played shortstop, call on it, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, put her anywhere. It's way different coach. now, but yeah. No, but that, like that's how you learn. Yeah. Right. Like you just, you get thrown places and you just want to play. Like right. you do anything to play. Was there any ever a point in your season where you didn't play a whole lot and it kind of affected you mentally and you were like, no, I need to find a way back on the field. Or were you kind of always just that gamer? That's like, I'm getting on the field. I feel like the only times I had those moments were like injured where I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And you can't like- do anything about it is not fun but other than that like I feel like I've always been on the field I feel like freshman year was probably a little tough for me just coming in and my coach was pretty much like you need to figure it out because I feel like he wanted me on the field but I guess just like mentally I wasn't like I guess locked in yet you could say like I wasn't like locked in yet to be on the field but I felt like I deserved to be on the field but you know how it goes like Mm -hmm. it is what it is yeah it taught me a lot it taught me a whole lot so that was definitely a learning moment for me. I didn't start when I first got to college until like maybe the eighth game or so. <laughs> yeah. Then from so, there on, I was on the field. So what did that take from you? Was it, okay, I got to put in my extra work or um, did you use that as motivation? Because I know a lot of people that, you know, they want to start their freshman year and they won't either, but they need to right. know how to get out of that and, you know, prove or show the coach that like, no, I deserve to be here. No, I feel like I knew I deserved to be there, but, you know, it's almost like proving the people who believe in you right type of deal where, like, I didn't feel like I had to prove anybody wrong. Like, they knew, like, Odyssey needs to be on this field, but it was more like I needed to know that, like, I needed to know, like, how good I could be. Like, I needed to know what, like, what type of athlete I was type of deal. That's what the conversation I got from my head coach was like, you need to know how great you are. And I will never forget. That's one thing he said to me my freshman year when I walked the first batter and he took me out of the game. I walked the first batter. These pitchers were close. Like the umpire was tripping, okay? Like it was like I was throwing the ball over the back or nothing like that. Like the pitchers were close. Literally walked the first batter. He was like, screamed at me on my way in the dugout. Like, you need to know how great you are. I'm like, hmm. That will forever sit with me. And I'm like, maybe I do. Wow. You know? <laughs> yeah. We all learn in different ways, but I'm almost yeah. happy that happened. Cause I'm sure that's like one of those motivators that you're like, okay, that won't happen again. Yeah. So I was like, okay, he knows I'm great, but like, do I truly deep down, you know, think I'm good at what I do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> he made me think about that. <laughs> we all have oh those great tests. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So I did a little digging. It it didn't take too much digging, but I heard when you were a freshman, you were interviewed at JMU and you were like, my dream is to play at the women's college world series. And you freaking did. We talked about it earlier. I did it. it. Um, but can you just like take me through that season? Like, what did that take from you and your teammates to get that done and to dominate? This was a wild season okay so for one we're just really going to dig down i'm gonna sum it up as much as possible okay <laughs> start of the season this is the last season i felt like i was in the best shape known to me like i feel like i've been in the best shape like i was through the whole 
other four years I've been in college, like I was at my good playing way, like I felt great. Third game, tore the hamstring. I'm like, no way. Yeah. Like, no way this just happened to me. Just blew a tire running to second base. Well, I was on the way to second base. Blew a base. tire. Yeah, blew the tire, crawled to first base. Cool. I'm like, oh, cool. I can go back in. I'm talking about blew the tire. Like, it's shot. I'm like, I'm good because the adrenaline's pumping. No, no. <laughs> Took the MRI, whatever, torn hamstring. So I'm like, bruh. And then it finally got to the point. I think it was coming close to like conference and they're like, you either need to basically come back and play. I'm not saying they were rushing me back to play or anything like they were rushed, but I had to make a decision where that I, am I going to play or I'm a red shirt? And I'm like, first of all, if I red shirt, I'm not coming back here. That was, that was the thought in my mind. You were already and a grad like, student, right? Yeah. At that point? I'm, like, yeah. I'm going to be here with my little kids. No, I'm not coming back pretty much. Like, because all my friends would have left. Like, it was just been a no for me. So I just woke up one day and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to ride it out with my dogs. And I'll say I'm probably like 95% kind of back with the hamstring. Like, I still didn't do too much when I came back. Like, I was still very hesitant to do certain things, but I was fine. I could pitch. I knew that. <laughs> I could pitch the ball. I knew that. I was fine to do that. Sprinting, I was like... So if you ever watch me sprint, it, it like doesn't look like a sprint. Uh-uh. It was not a sprint. It was a, oh, just get to the base. You're all right. <laughs> You're all right. But um, so I came back, won the conference. We ended up, of course, here we go to Tennessee. I feel like every regional we went to Tennessee. And I'm like, okay, cool. Here we go again. Go to Tennessee. End up winning those games. I'm like, okay, cool. Cool. Here we go to Super Regionals. This is the point we always get to that I feel like people never really, you know, even cared about because Jamie, I feel like, has always done well ever since I've been there. Mm-hmm. Like, we've even made it to Regionals, made it to Super Regionals, and that was it for us. Something was different about this. And I felt like through the Super, super Regionals, well, Regionals and Super Regionals, like, my grandpa got really, really sick. So I felt like at the time, I don't know. It was tough for me mentally, but I'm just like, you know, I'm going to play for something way bigger than me. And obviously that's always been my mindset too, is just playing for something bigger than me and just having gratitude and just being grateful for just stepping on this field because a lot of people don't get to do, you know, what I do. So kind of just taking it, taking that in. And every time I stepped on the field, like he was my first thought and um, he's fine now. He's great now. But if you want to know, he had stage four lung cancer. He's good. Oh my gosh. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. What a I can't even make this up. I'm not even making this up. And he's perfectly fine now, but all through the World Series. And this is things like people didn't know. I don't know if you saw, like, people were like, we can get your grandparents here. Like, ESP was like, we can fly them out. And I'm like, and they're like, no. No. Girl, they would be here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. y'all don't have to do that. But I was the type of player where, like, it's almost like I didn't want the pity story. Like I didn't want, I wanted people to see me for the softball player I was and not like where I came from. Like, obviously, yes, we all have a story. Cool. Yes. Odyssey had to get it out the mud. We know that. Great. But that's not something I have to preach to somebody. I want people to know me for me and like the softball player I am and like what I bring to the table. And that's like what it was all about. Because they were really like, they're like, Cece, we can fly your grandpa here. I'm like, he can't even get on a plane. <laughs> like, he can't, like he couldn't. And it did, it did break my heart um, that he couldn't be there because that's like the number one place that that was my number one goal. And to have him there, that would have meant a lot to me. But a whole lot of other family came out, of course, um, that made my day. But people watching the World Series would have never knew. They don't even know that. And they're like, oh my God, how'd you make that play? I'm like, girl, I was playing for something way bigger. <laughs> you know, I couldn't wait yeah. to go home and call my grandpa. Like, I knew he was watching, like, but yeah, girl, I feel like that's literally what got me through that season. He got sick around, like, the conference tournament, like, once I figured stuff out, and from there on, it was just, like, Odyssey was in a different mode. Yeah. How, so that's, that's, was... that's so motivating. I mean, you think about, you know, some of the best players to do any any sport, anything that they've done, and there is that that 
crazy motivation that doesn't like you play like out of body almost like because it's like no my body's just trusting you know I'm just trusting what it could do because right. I'm not worried about uh, striking out I'm not worried about you know what if I miss my location I'm not worried about these things right like you didn't feel that throughout the entire tournament no isn't that wild it is it's amazing. I mean, but like, it's also like sad because it's like, we obviously don't want him in this position, but wild right. that like, you're playing your best softball because of it. Right. Whoa. It was my teammates too. Like they knew, like they were only people who knew. Yeah. Like really what I had going on. But I feel like when Amanda Scarborough asked, she asked me some questions. She was like, kind of like, who inspires you to play the sport? This is where I got like, I'm like, dang, he can't be here, but. <laughs> it hit me i was like no nah. we're not really trying not to cry, cry on camera but they got me they got you <laughs> but they got me. yeah so would you say like he's he's been your biggest motivator biggest cheerleader oh 100 percent. my grandpa brags on me to this day and i'm like grandpa chill out <laughs> but he's such a good person i feel like that's just what makes it you know kind of just cool to see like I can go to town like because obviously we live in a small town and say I need an oil change or my tires rotated or something like that like the guys do it for free they're like oh like your grandpa's Washington right and I'm like yeah they're like oh we got and I'm like okay cool I'll live here forever <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's so cool that just shows you like who he is and that speaks a lot of volume on you know what my family pretty much you know does for the community Mm -hmm. and that's yeah. not on like having money or any financial it's just like who you are as a person so mm -hmm. yeah and and how cool did you just hear him? yeah I did <laughs> is he listening no no, no. I'm looking for a jacket oh <laughs> that's amazing he can totally come in if he yeah. wants um that's incredible it's about but well so you still live you know, in Virginia, and now you get to run like your own softball business called 643. Like, how cool is it that you get to bring ever, all the knowledge that you have, all the knowledge that you've gained, and you get to share it in your own facility? That is, I mean, I'm just still kind of in shock that they just were like, Odyssey, we want you to do this. Like, it's still, mm -hmm. like, it's just, almost like breathtaking because you're like what like I've this has been a goal too just like the world series like this has been something I was I was going to push for um and whatever I had to do I was going to do that and then for them to just you know kind of bring this opportunity to me I'm like oh yeah oh yeah I got you and just to see the atmosphere that they already have and see what they do for the sport and what they do for young female athletes and it's literally just females like that's really big on my part too. Women's sports, we've talked about this at the beginning. Like, I'm all in. Whatever we can do to continue to grow this sport, and whatever I can do to continue to like to invest and just help bring positivity and just growth, money, whatever these women need. Like, I'm in, and that can be for basketball, lacrosse, volleyball, whatever. Women in sports like that will always hold. I don't even know. Like, it's it's different. Like, I can get emotional talking about women in sports and just what you know we go through yeah so 643 it was founded by dads right and they yeah. so they how many locations <laughs> do they have dads. Now? softball dads that just want what's best for their daughters have a facility where their daughters <laughs> can go and how many locations do they have now Is right now three? it's three so they have one yep manassas virginia they have one in ashburn virginia and then they have one in wake forest raleigh north carolina and then the one I'll have will be in Richmond, Virginia. And then they'll have one in Fairfax, Virginia. So cool. So and cool. And then I think more places, but you know. <laughs> yeah. But We're just, trying to keep so it neat. going. Let's keep it going. Yeah. It it's and very cool. It's a huge like inspiration for those like, you know, maybe you're just leaving the game. You know, they graduated and they're trying to figure out what's next, but they love the game. It's like yes. maybe this is an opportunity where you can kind of run your own show and also just make it however you want it so no heck yeah seriously i'm gonna come over and run a hitting it's really cool. sometime you cool with that i think you should come i uh, i'm very cool with that 
I am very cool with that. Okay. You can come wait. whenever you want. I didn't just invite myself, by the way. We talked about this prior to recording. We did. <laughs> I didn't want to sound you cocky. Come whenever um, you want, but... but heck yeah, let's go. And then my parents, yeah. my grandparents are in uh, Pennsylvania, which isn't too far. So I can just make an old trip. Oh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Good. Um, last question I want to ask you before we go into rapid fire is we talked about the cool vibe that you have on the mound, that dominance, that presence. There are pitchers all over this country that want that. How do you think that this started? Like how was it just you throwing the wall into the, <laughs> throwing the ball into the water well? Like, or what was it that brought this just presence about you? That's just like, I'm going to dominate. I'm going to get this girl out. Like that's what we've all seen. Where did that come from? I think it's just from the dedication and the hard work that I put in, you know, growing up. And I would tell my sister this all the time. My grandpa would tell her like me and her were different. And I told her all my siblings are different. Like we just do different stuff. We have different talents. That's fine. And I guess me, you know, being big in softball, she wanted to play softball as well. And I'm like, well, sister, I'm going to hold on. Look, here you go. Are we getting? Yes. Up. Did you find your jacket? <laughs> Grandpa, I'm on a podcast. <laughs> he don't even know what that is. I was talking good about you. Well, Grandpa, can you hurry up and get out? I got to finish this. I just want to know if he found his jacket. Did you find your jacket? That's what I was looking for. I don't think it's in there, buddy. This is the highlight of my day, right? Go now. ahead. I know. <laughs> Go ahead. What was it? Ain't no, no goat was in those hands. What the hat, mm -hmm. Grandpa? I'm on the on the thing. Can you <laughs> ask him? Ask him how proud he is of you. Come on, get on the podcast, Grandpa. Oh. <laughs> Are you proud of me? Proud of you, boy. Oh my God. Okay, you're ruining my thing. You're not proud of me. I don't need him to say he's proud of me. You know that, right? <laughs> well, Stanley, like, why would it be in here? Cause I we move that furniture around so you can get that thing in there and I push that chair. You don't want to be on the podcast. Mm -mm. He's not good at stuff like this. You That's know, right. ESPN came to the house, right? And he didn't want them to come, but they had the interview. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. He's humble, right, so you know. Like he'll be he your is. biggest fan, but he doesn't want to be in the spotlight. No, he does not want to be in the spotlight. He mm -hmm. was in the spotlight for a long time. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm over that. Like, That's done. He's like, I'm not used to this. <laughs> <laughs> so great. No, he's cool. Yeah. I don't know why he thought his jacket would be in my room. I'm confused. I don't know either. It's amazing. Huh? Anyway, we we're talking about the dedication and the just what? the presence, the dominance. So you said it came from you just thinking about the hard work you've put in and just trusting it yeah pretty much literally that's it like I feel like hard work builds confidence and I tell my girls this all the time I said if you put in the work and you prepare yourself for these you know pressure moments it <laughs> it is what it is like it's either gonna go great or it's okay like and that's why I say when those pressure moments come up especially in the pros I'm like base loaded two outs you got Haley McClinney up I'm just like so what bro like it's <laughs> whatever happens happens like we're all really good at what we do like I'm cool mm -hmm. yeah and when you play with that freedom you allow yourself to just also right just do what you said you want to do without like yeah. putting that pressure on yourself of like oh I have right. to do this you know and or like come out, you start doing things that you never thought you're like did I just do that <laughs> like, yeah like the diving play at home <laughs> yeah you're like what is going on? Yeah. yeah yeah there is that freedom from just saying you know I, you can't predict the future but you can be in the present yeah, yeah. right oh and now the dog's here i love it his appearance hey okay, friend buddy. is it a golden doodle yeah i have a golden doodle mine's an f1 though Isn't so he's it? like 50 50 oh so yours is more poodle Ooh. it looks like yeah yeah <laughs> yeah hypoallergenic mini no, he's 75 pounds. You have a big one. Oh, he's a big no, dog. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm, so you have the standard. Yeah, I got the normal one, I, I guess. But, you know, I if I not. could send mine back and get a smaller one, I would. 
Yeah, he's like perfect size. I yeah. could do like, oh, they are huge. That's so great. I mean, yeah, I love doodles, but like. <laughs> I love it. Is there anything from a pitching standpoint that we didn't cover that if you could talk to like a younger pitcher and she needs to know like one or two things, what would those be? I would say one, like you just said, like how people want that cool, calm, collective type of vibe, like, girl, be you, whatever you do on the mound. Like, I don't know if you've seen this video on Instagram, but it was this one girl who literally like, and she's at a mid-major school. I'm probably, I don't know, you're not, obviously we're not going up against the Oklahoma or nothing like that, but it's this video where she literally pointed at the batter and like, told her to go sit down. I was all for that. I personally would never do that, but I just like, like that video so much. And I'm just like, God, like, she just pointed at her and told her to go sit down. She just struck her out. Excuse me. Wow. I'm all for it though. I'm all yeah. for stuff like that. I'm personally not doing that. That like, reminds in my brain. me, I had a catcher. So a pitcher that she ended up going to Purdue, which is where I went. But in high school, she used to say like, um, strike like before the ball was even missed by the hitter she'd be like strike <laughs> okay why and, she, <laughs> and she would just like call it and they'd be like strike three and she'd be like you're out like before it's even crossed the plate but she knows that girl's not swinging and talk mm, katie hackney i'm calling you out girl i love you but <laughs> love she it. she was it was just like that like she just I love freaking that. played that way and she wore the sunglasses she had just this i'm gonna eat you mentality like it was just oh yeah was, oh man like, in high school facing her I was like I think I got a hit off of her I was like oh my god how do we do this but I literally I love to have fun like there are moments where like say Amanda Lorenz I'm calling you out Amanda well it's not calling her out but it's hilarious like I will throw a pitch where I'm like Amanda could have sent this a million feet and me and her would just look at each other and start laughing like thank god you did not do that <laughs> you're not getting that again like we would literally look at each other and start laughing like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. That's what I love about that. Like, and like, it's pro fun. Ball. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's what it's meant to be. It's it's just competitive, you know? And like, if yeah. Amanda did go deep, you know, on one of the pitches you threw, it's game on the next time, right. you know? Yep. Or I'm like, just, wow, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> Give credit where she credit is due. Laser. Take... Correct. You got yeah. it, girl. She got it. <laughs> yeah. Top, so cool. she's definitely top three who I'm like I don't want to do <laughs> yeah so she's been she's on the podcast before three. we talked about like her she doesn't have like this conventional perfect swing you know she has like her own yeah. unique swing about her oh, she's and strong. she gets it done like yes and she talked about how if, if y'all haven't listened to this episode already go back but she talks about how you know coach Walton was always telling them like, no, we're going to practice your strengths more than anything. We're going right. to attack the weaknesses just to make sure you're not terrible at them. But like, even your weaknesses aren't even that bad. So he's yeah. like, no, we're going to play to our strengths. And I feel like as a pitcher, you're probably doing the same thing. Like, you're not going to try to throw something that, you know, you don't feel it's comfortable throwing if that's right. going to be what the hitter doesn't want. You're like, no, I'm going to beat her with my best. Right. I'm going to try. Yeah, I'm going to do my, I'm going to. In my head, I'm going to be with my best. my best. If it doesn't work, we'll renegotiate ah. later. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. okay, so Love I people. this was so much fun. Um, before I ask you rapid fire, people are going to want to know how to follow you if they don't already, which they probably do. But where do you like to hang out so we can kind of just see what you're up to? First of all, to follow me, what is my Twitter? I think it's the number two, C's with underscore. That's Twitter. TikTok's my name, Odyssey Alexander underscore. Instagram is double C's. Hope you guys know that. Double underscore C's. CC, if you it. guys didn't know, that's my nickname. <laughs> <laughs> that's my nickname. And then what else was it? Where do I like just, I'm always in Texas. Um, shout out to my cousin. He lives there. He plays for the San Antonio Spurs and we just, you know, have a ball. We train together. We do country stuff together. We <laughs> So fun. You know, just kind of live it up in Texas. And I just love to s surround myself with, you know, positive people. And, you know, that's literally it. <laughs> yeah. You'll be there soon. Um, You have cowboy boots? 
I do. But I need some more because he's getting out of hand with the cowboy boots. And, like, I'm talking about, like, elephant, like, leather. I'm like, wait a minute. Whoa. Are you, yeah, this is getting serious. That's great. So I need to step my game up a little bit. Apparently. Apparently you do. We'll get there. Well, we, we'll get there. <laughs> we get the privilege of watching you this summer for AUX and AU, yeah. um, which will be super fun. I mean, just even winning, you know, the winning the title of AU last year, like, is is that the goal again? Or are you just going to see what happens? I'm going to, you know I mean? I'm just going to see what happens. Try my best to continue to play free and just have fun, honestly. <laughs> Not a girl. I love that. Okay, quick rapid fire, and then we are going to get on with the rest of our day. Again, so grateful for your rapid time. Fire. <laughs> um, now, you know, pitching drills that Amanda taught you, do you have a fave? Did you have a go-to? A fave. Oh, Ooh, we're going back. You can is, name this more rapid, than is this the rapid fire? Yeah, but it's fine. God. The whole pitch. <laughs> Oh, okay. okay, so not a drill. Arm whip. Arm whip. Arm whip. Okay, so if we type in arm, arm whip on YouTube. I don't know what to type in, but it's, it's arm whip drill on there. I know for sure. Okay, great. Okay, great. I'll try to find it and tag it in the show notes. Um, <laughs> okay, if you could choose any past or present player to be on your AU team, like right here, right now. Again, you don't have to play with them, but any player, like... Who would be that one that you would want on your team? I could bring anybody. Deja Molipola. Yes. That's my dog. Heavy hitter, dude. I saw Heavy her hit a home hitter. run. I was like, it has landed. I was like, are you, like, she's hit one off me. I'm like, dude, are you serious? Like, so good. You so really good. did not have to do that. <laughs> like she did because she had to, she had to go win that year uh, yeah that's the year she won and it went so far and I was like you're kidding right maybe I watched that one I don't know you uh, probably did <laughs> a phrase that you say to yourself on the mound or in the box like to keep you focused what is something I say to myself on the mound mm-hmm. I don't really say anything if you want to be honest I just kind of I don't know I'm kind of zoned I'm just locked in kind of almost zoned out like this is what I do so nothing really keep this going or I'll think about my grandparents yeah I'll think about my grandparents like perfect <laughs> nothing too crazy I love it um so speaking of your grandparents a lesson that you're grateful to have learned from them that you want um, never give up know. never give up never give up that's something my grandpa always said to me never give up mm, no matter what stuff. I love that last question that I have for you what legacy would you like to leave our game that's a really, that's deep. rapid fire. That's deep. Like, that's deep. deep. I know that's rude of me, <laughs> but I did make it the last one for a reason. You did. What legacy? I would just say be you and be the best version of you. And that comes from knowing you. So figuring out, you know, who you are as a person and go from there. One step at a time. Attitude of gratitude. Attitude of gratitude is like my favorite. Yeah. I would say the little things. This past season, me and Bubba Nichols, we would always write each other like Bible verses and like stick them in our back pockets before every game. And there are some moments where I would just touch that back pocket like, Whoo! help me out. <laughs> help me out. You got it here. You got it here. I feel like the little things really do matter. And I feel like sometimes like to kind of take it for granted, but literally just going back to the small things because they add up to the big things. Um so definitely attitude of gratitude. I'd say that. That's my biggest thing. Yeah. Well, you're probably the player that knows herself the most. I mean, to be honest, like I just, I have admired watching you play. I've admired every conversation we've had prior to meeting. Um, just, I love that you own who you are and you are an inspiration to those listening and those that just see, you know, you and your greatness and how lucky they are to work with you out in Virginia. It's so great. <laughs> Uh, we will be cheering you on all AUX season and all AU season. Um, and just thanks for being you. Thanks for coming on. This yes. has been a blast. This has. I appreciate you so much.